Hello and welcome to Psychegeist, where we talk about the psychology of the era, the science of games. I'm your host, Dr. Rachel Cowart, and on today's episode of State of the Research, we're going to be talking about the social impact of games. In a previous episode of Academic Ramblings, we explored the theoretical links between why playing games, particularly online games, might impact players socially. Specifically, we talked about the social displacement, social compensation, social augmentation, and cycle model of use. If you aren't familiar with these theories, I would suggest going back and watching that episode of Academic Ramblings before continuing on with this one. Because in this episode of State of the Research, we're going to be talking about the research, the hard science in relation to how games impact players socially. That is, we will be answering the question, does playing video games have negative social consequences? Don't worry, the positive side of the coin, the social learning, will be talked about in a future video. When it comes to exploring the potential negative impact of video gameplay on social outcomes, there are three broad areas to explore. The impact of video games on our social currency, these are our relationships, quality and quantity, social ability, which are our social skills, and psychosocial well-being, mental health as it relates to socialization. We're gonna talk about each of these today. First up, social currency. Does playing video games negatively impact our out of game or offline relationships? The empirical relationships between video game play and social outcomes were first explored in the 1980s when researchers found that high frequency arcade players displayed a lower self esteem than low frequency players and were more likely to report that arcade machines provide them with a companionship that was preferable to interaction with their peers. As someone who spent a lot of time in arcades during their teenage years, I can kind of relate. Quitting the term electronic friendship, researchers believed that these findings suggested that arcade machines could be emerging as substitutes for social engagement. With the advent of generally affordable and accessible internet, these ideas have since been expanded to suggest that one's online in-game friends have the potential to replace one's offline out-of-game friends. There is preliminary support to suggest this possibility as a large percentage of online game players do report that in-game friends are equivalent to or superior to their offline ones and that online friendships satisfy some social needs that are not satisfied by pre-existing offline relationships. Kraut and colleagues were among the first to examine the potential impact of social internet use on pre-existing interpersonal relationships. Following the same people over time, so this was a longitudinal study, they evaluated social displacement effects of social internet use during an individual's first one to two years online. They found greater internet use to be associated with significant declines in social involvement, including decreased family communication and a decreased size in one's social networks. Similar results were reported by Bessery and colleagues in relation to social uses of the internet, that is using the internet to meet others. As this was found to predict declines in community involvement, such as reduced participation in organized groups, churches, and clubs. When looking at social online gameplay specifically, similar relationships have been found. Lowe and colleagues found heavier users of online games, those who played 30 hours a week or more, to report a poorer quality of interpersonal relationships than light users, which was defined as two to seven hours a week of play or non-playing participants. Similarly, Shannon Williams found a negative linear association, like this, one goes up, one goes down, negative linear association between online video gameplay and family communication quality. As play frequency increased, family communication quality decreased, indicating a poorer quality of communication for those who did not play games with their family members. Meeting people online was pinpointed as a particularly strong predictor of shorter communication and worse quality. In the only known experimental study evaluating the potential social effects of engagement across game modalities, that was a mouthful, Smith randomly assigned participants to play offline single player games, either an arcade, a console game, or computer game, or a massively multiplayer online game. After one month of play, the online players, the MMO players in this case, reported greater play frequency, greater reduction in the time spent socializing with offline friends, and greater interest in continuing play than players of any of the single player games. As players grew closer to their in-game contacts, offline activities were displaced and players began to show patterns of cocooning, which is defined as retreating into the seclusion of one's home during leisure time, not necessarily the basement. 
Over time, players began to place a higher value on their in-game social contacts at the expense of their pre-existing relationships. The players themselves noticed this particular shift in behavior and discussed the breakdown of friendships and relationships to being social online to being antisocial offline. While the displacement, the exchange, the breakdown, whatever you want to call it, of offline relationships due to online gameplay has been found, it does seem to be predominantly among the most involved players, not the average user. In my own work, I found linear relationships between the quality and quantity of friendships and online gameplay frequency, but no broad differences between offline, online, and non-players. That is, those who engaged in online games the most are the ones who showed the lower quality and quantity of offline friendships. Again, suggesting that these social differences might be limited to the most involved players. So what's the conclusion here? The average player is unlikely to suffer significant social disruptions to their social currency, their relationship quality and relationship quantity of offline friends due to gameplay alone. The general state of the research refutes this idea that online game players have smaller, lower quality friendship circles. That said, it does provide some support to the notion that more involved players may experience changes in their social circles due to gameplay, though it's difficult to determine causality and direct cause and effect because the only experimental study we have in this batch is that of Smith. Next up, psychosocial well-being. Do games negatively impact our psychosocial well-being in relation to our ability to socialize? For this video, we're going to focus on two outcomes related to sociability, loneliness, and social anxiety. Lonely individuals have been found to be more likely than non-lonely individuals to prefer online to offline communication. Additionally, lonely individuals report that the sense of anonymity offered by online spaces is socially liberating, that they can feel more themselves online and find it easier to make friends online and generate a social network. Kaplan and colleagues found loneliness to be the single most influential psychosocial predictor of increased online video game use, with lonelier participants reporting increased involvement in online games. Positive linear relationships have also been found between time spent in online gaming spaces and increased loneliness. Online game players have also been found to display higher rates of symptoms associated with social anxiety, although this has been much less extensively studied than the work in loneliness. Generally speaking, social anxiety is associated with feelings of comfort online. Positive linear relationships between social anxiety and problematic online video gameplay have been found. I will say though, a lack of comparison measures, that is an assessment of how this actually impacts somebody in their day-to-day -day life, aren't typically included in this kind of work, so it's difficult to determine the magnitude of these effects on a player's everyday life. It's also difficult to determine causality here. That is, whether these findings are indicative that people with low social resources are drawn to online games or if online games somehow exacerbate the symptoms of social anxiety and loneliness. For example, in a 2016 study, researchers found that World of Warcraft players report lower social anxiety and lower loneliness in game than in the real world, which could be indicative of social compensation. However, this study and the ones I mentioned previously are cross-sectional in nature. That is, they take a snapshot of a population rather than following the same people over time, making it difficult to determine cause and effect. There are two longitudinal studies, that is two studies that follow the same people over time that I haven't mentioned yet, that do attempt to tease out these cause and effect relationships. This is the work of Lemons and colleagues and Cowart and colleagues. Wait, I know her. Lemons and colleagues found loneliness to be a cause and a consequence of increased problematic play among adolescent players, with loneliness predicting increased pathological play and pathological play predicting increased loneliness over a six month period. It's curious that loneliness was not found to be alleviated through engagement, but rather exacerbated over time. But this might be due to the fact that the researchers focused on problematic play rather than just play generally. This seems particularly likely as a follow-up study by Cowart and colleagues found that these same relationships do not hold among a general game playing population. Instead, we found positive links between online gameplay and self-esteem among adolescent players, suggesting a positive influence of online gameplay over time for adolescents. More longitudinal work is really needed in this area, but the problem is it's very expensive and it takes a lot of time. But if you have the money, I have the time. Last but not least, social ability. 
are video games creating a generation of socially inept basement dwellers. In addition to potentially exacerbating pre-existing conditions in ways that may negatively influence effective socialization, prolonged online video gameplay is also feared to negatively impact one's ability to form and maintain reciprocal offline relationships through either stunted development or maintenance of effective offline social skills. For instance, the ability to verbally engage with others or to manage one's social self-presentation in real time. This concern has spurred numerous examinations into the relationship between video game play and social skills, including my doctoral dissertation, but I'll get to that in a minute. In one of the first studies in this area, Chu and colleagues looked at video game addiction and social skills among child and teenage players. While lower social skills did not show a relationship with video game addiction, lower rates of boredom and greater family functioning emerged as significant predictors of effective social skills. The researchers suggested that these findings indicate the potential for video gameplay to replace the development of immediate social relationships and then in turn could negatively impact social skills, particularly among younger players. Liu and Peng uncovered similar results as they found video game play frequency to be a positive predictor of psychological dependency on MMORPG play, a preference for a virtual life and low social engagement. Lower social control, the ability to manage one's social self-presentation in real time, that is being able to maintain eye contact and use appropriate nonverbal communication, make sure your body is positioned an appropriate distance from the people around you, which granted in 2020 is now further than it used to be, was also found to be a significant predictor of preference for a virtual life and psychological dependency on MMORPGs. Again, all this research on MMORPGs. The conclusion here is there was an indirect relationship between lower social control, which is a social skill, and problematic play in the form of preference for a virtual life. Other researchers have also found increased online video game play to be associated with a hindered ability to form and maintain reciprocal offline relationships. The work of Lemons and colleagues mentioned earlier also looked at social skill outcomes. They found lower social skill to predict increased pathological gaming six months later, but not pathological gaming to predict a change in social skills, suggesting that lower social skills may be a cause more than a consequence of online gameplay. Then there's the work of Kim and colleagues who concluded, quote, the use of online games is associated with a decline in participants' communication with family members in the household and a decline in the size of their social circles. And because of this, they may become socially isolated and are no longer able to socialize in a normal way. I mentioned my doctoral dissertation at the start of this section. I focused my work during my PhD looking at the social impact on games, specifically its impact on social skills. The TLDR from it, Trust me, you don't want all the details. Oh, you do? Wait, let me get it. <sighs> Page one. This is actually, this is actually my dissertation. You don't want that. If you do actually want to read it, it is published in a research monograph called Video Games and Social Competence from Routledge. It's nice, it's hardback, go for it. Alas, my digression. So let me TLDR my five years of physical and emotional distress from graduate school. Significant linear relationships between social skills and online video game involvement are evident for some skills among the most involved players, indicating that more involved video game players do show a different social profile than the average player. This includes a lower ability to verbally engage others, so to start a verbal conversation. That said, broad differences between offline, online, Online and non-players were not found, meaning there are no social differences between the average online player, offline exclusive player, and non-video game player. So taking this work as a whole, we can conclude that there are relationships between social skills and online video gameplay, with the most involved players showing some differences, what might be called deficiencies in social skills. This includes online game players perceiving themselves as lacking social self-presentation skills, being less comfortable in social situations, being less verbally controlled and emotionally expressive. More involved game players also showed a greater sensitivity to nonverbal cues and greater social hesitancy. Again, a lack of longitudinal research makes it difficult to conclude whether these relationships are due to displacement or evidence of social compensation. 
going back to those theories in the previous academic ramblings video. That is whether lower social skills entice people to engage in online gaming spaces, or if engagement in these spaces over time somehow change one's social abilities. Although the two longitudinal studies discussed here, the work of Lemons and the follow-up with Cohort and colleagues lean more heavily towards compensation mechanisms. That said, even though the cause and effect, the chicken and the egg is a bit unclear, it can be concluded that the empirical research in this area highlights the unreliability of claims that increased online video gameplay inevitably leads to a decline in one's ability to socialize effectively in offline situations. All gamers are not antisocial, socially unskilled basement dwellers, which I know we knew, but now we have the power of science behind these claims. So what can we take from all of this? Online communities do seem to be thriving at the expense of offline relationships and activities for the most involved, with online game players themselves linking being social online to being antisocial offline. Online relationships seem to have created what we would call a communication paradox. Actually, it's what Shannon Williams call it, but I like it, so I'm taking it. It's a paradox because increased participation in online games, which seemingly promote interaction and sociability, have been found to be associated with a range of negative social outcomes. The social profile of the most involved players varies significantly from the less involved or non-playing samples, with more involved players reporting to be more overly concerned with social norms and their public appearance, being less verbally fluent, being less able to engage others in conversation, and adapt to social situations. Situations. While it can't be concluded whether games are the instigator of these changes, preliminary longitudinal work suggests that these differences actually motivate gameplay, they're compensatory in nature, rather than a direct effect of gameplay through, say, displacement effects. We can conclude with certainty, however, that the stereotype of the reclusive, socially inept, I have no friends and live in my parents' basement is inaccurate. Does this look like a basement to you? We can also conclude that online gameplay does not inevitably lead to worse social outcomes in regards to social currency, social ability, or psychosocial well-being. Players are not showing the all-encompassing maladaptive social outcomes that they're presumed to have. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. And until next time, be excellent to each other and always cite your sources.